Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, I am Jonathan from Curto's Appliances, aka The Appliance Dude. Yeah, well, you know, we're not talking about appliances today. I'm talking about the outdoors, grilling, smoking, searing. And when I'm in this universe, folks, I take off the Appliance Dude moniker and I go by my new nom de guerre, which is Senor Smoke. That's my homage to the great, the first Senor Smoke, the great Mexican badass Aurelia Lopez, who was a, um, a lockdown reliever on the 1984 World, Cham World Series champion Detroit Tigers. Aurelio dealt the heat 95 miles an hour, bore a hole through Lance Parrish's glove, and uh, he was quite a badass. Rest in peace, Aurelio. So my mission here, of course, as I do with the appliances, is to give you all the knowledge you need to make the right buying decisions with honesty, integrity, passion, and power. I will be throwing 95 mile an hour heaters, and they will be moving. Um, so anyway, um, Alfresco, yeah, we're talking about Alfresco again. I hope I'm not boring you talking about my favorite grill, my favorite gas grill at least. But I need to refocus the conversation because I've been talking so much about this solid fuel insert that allows you to cook with uh, wood and lump hardwood charcoal and all those other good things which impart such crazy flavor characteristics to your food and also gets white hot for searing. Um, I, I, I got off the whole topic of the infrared burner and I actually started to poo-poo it to some people. I'm like, do I really, do you really need a sear zone when you have the solid fuel insert? Do you really need to take 12 to 14 inches of your grill space up with an IR burner? And people, I stand corrected. I think you do. Um, I've had a couple of people come to me recently, guys who really know um, uh, what they're doing when it comes to grilling. And they spoke the truth to me and spoke, preached the gospel to me about the IR burner. And they wanted an Alfresco IR burner because of its innate ability to emulate an M2 flamethrower, which of course was the flamethrower of choice that the greatest generation used in World War II. Um, the Alfresco IR sear burner goes from 1100 to 1600 degrees. That is white, molten, hot. That is the burner of choice if Mephistopheles was grilling, okay? Um, my whole take on the IR burner was like, why do you need that heat? Why would you donate, dedicate that much real estate on your grill for something where all you're doing is searing and caramelizing and you're pulling stuff off pretty quickly to the other part of the grill? Well, I stand corrected and I'm backing off that statement, okay? because there is more to do with this than just sear and caramelize. You can turn 1100 degrees to 1600 degrees of pure hellfire. You can use it to your advantage and use it in a controlled aspect. And I'm gonna give you two examples. What I did, actually, again, I had a gentleman who came down, he enlightened me. He came down from ESPN, Bristol, Connecticut, drove down here. He wanted an Alfresco grill. He wasn't feeling it for his other premium grill he bought recently. I won't name it because I sell it. He said, Jonathan, it's flaccid. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't sear like I want. I'm very interested in the Alfresco sear power. I said, come on down and test drive the Hellfire burner. And that's what I, that's, what, that's my name for the infrared burner on the Alfresco. That is not Alfresco's you know, term that is a Senor Smoke Appliance Dude moniker for this, okay? The Hellfire Burner, because that's what it's bringing. Um, anyway, he came down with a big two and a half inch thick steak. It looked like a Mastodon. Assorted other pieces of beef as well. We lit up the grill on Central Avenue and he was stunned by the power of this. Of this. And what we did is two minutes seared on each side and then he lowered the warming rack and cooked it seven minutes on each side, um, uh, lid down. We got a per nearly a perfect medium rare on such a big cut of beef. I was really, really impressed by it. And uh, so that's kudos to you, Steve. Good play on that one. And then what I did, I wanted to really test it. So I said, let me get a piece of beef that has a very low margin of error, okay? I wanna find something, if I do it wrong, it's gonna blow up in my face. And I said, let's get marinated skirt steak, okay? You take skirt steak and the, it's the wrong turn, the slightly, the slightest wrong turn, and you are eating a tire, okay? You're eating rubber. So I got a highly, heavily marinated piece of skirt steak. I put it on the IR burner, on the Hellfire burner yesterday, and I did one and a half to two minutes on one side, one and a half to two minutes on the other side, took it off to the main burner for maybe another minute, pulled it off, bang, 
and I tempt it for five minutes, plate it. Temping, of course, means letting it sit, letting the muscles in the meat contract and relax. Um, it's perfect, perfect medium rare. My wife is like, this is incredible. Would you cook it on the Kamado Joe? I was like, no, did it on the Alfresco. So I want to just destroy the myth that that infrared burner is simply for caramelizing and searing and creating a bark on your food. No, you can cook with this, okay, with the alfresco, and you absolutely can. You just need to be careful, you need to be responsible. I don't recommend doing it after having 12 to 15 Stella Artois or, you know, five to 10 margaritas, because you, well, you need to operate your grill with control out to begin with. It's a dangerous thing potentially. But with these IR burners, when they're coming at you with the heat of Mephistopheles, that I already mentioned. Mephistopheles, I have Faust on my mind, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's an incredible tool. So I don't think it's a waste for the real estate anymore because you can't cook with this thing. And again, I give credit to Alfresco for creating such an incredible, incredible product. And just to kind of like wrap this whole thing up, why would one want an infrared burner to begin with aside from getting a crazy sear? Well, first of all, they're cleaner, okay? Any drip drippings, this, that, whatever, like my briquettes starting to look like hell, right? They all disappear. When things drip down onto the infrared burner, pff, they disappear because of the heat, okay? Um, we also like infrared because it's fast. It gets a temperature very quickly, usually within a couple of minutes. Um, and also, we like infrared because it minimizes flare-ups. And flare-ups can either be a blessing or flare-ups can be the absolute bane of any griller's existence. Um, they will ruin your party. They will turn your filet mignon into hockey pucks or your hamburgers into hockey pucks. We like controlled flare-ups. A flame kiss, poof, it touches the food and it, it invigorates your food with flavor, but then it needs to come back down again. That's what Alfresco ceramic briquette system does. Incredible system. But if you have a prolonged or a sustained flare-up, it will ruin everything and can also be a potential danger, a hazard, um, and cause a grill fire. That's really it. I am now sold on the Hellfire burner. This is the way to go. If you want heat, if you want power, if you want an M2 flamethrower, you have to get this. It's the most powerful one out there. Um, that's it. We're also, again, like I said, we're going to do some test drives of various grills. If you want to come down, if you want to test drive the Hellfire or any other component on the Alfresco, let's say the rotisserie to smoke tiss, if you want to do the solid fuel insert, you have to call us, make an appointment, and we'll do it. We'll do it for you because we're here to serve. Remember that. Folks, thank you so much. Appliance dude, senor, I, I called myself that again. I'm sorry. It's been four years. Senor Smoke is here. There's a lot of videos coming up, folks. I'm recommitting myself. I've been so busy. I know you don't want to hear about that. But when I get the phone calls and I get the visits and the people say thank you, thank you. And these are even people who don't buy, but they still thank me anyways for the time that I did this. That makes me feel whole. That makes me feel really good. I'm putting good shit out there in the universe, people. I'm happy it's helping you. Any questions, JonathanAcurtos.com. Keep grilling, keep smoking, keep searing, keep doing what you're doing, folks. Peace.